It's pretty hard to look at all that and not feel slightly motivated to boot up the game and play it right away. Your addiction isn't doing you any favors boss. Regardless of my unhealthy obsession with these games, one thing is clear, Armored Core 6 is the most popular, well-received and polished entry of the franchise up until now. A few months ago I uploaded a joke where I had stamped a lot of fake 10 out of 10 review scores and seals of approval from multiple platforms, not expecting that to actually translate into reality for the most part. This game's success is irrefutable. The Raven community has absolutely exploded in numbers, there's an actually genuinely severe want for more Armored Core content, patches, and future games, this is something that everyone could obviously see coming given from software's current status, but not to this degree. So, first and foremost I want to congratulate the team for pulling off one of the biggest revivals of a franchise ever, while simultaneously adhering to so much of what makes it special in the first place. This is incredibly hard to do, and they deserve all the praise they can get for it. I've talked about why AC6 is so important for fans, the series and gaming as a whole before, I've also been outspoken about everything that I felt was subpar or disappointing from my perspective. What I have yet to do is talk about everything the game does absolutely right, which, not surprisingly, encompasses a lot of things. So today I'll be singing Armored Core 6's praises, and pointing out what I personally feel are its greatest achievements. Following the structure and logic of my previous videos, we'll start by looking at more subjective and surface-level topics while slowly diving deeper into the inner workings and mechanics of the game. Without further ado, let's get right into it. Right off the bat, there's something that needs to be said about this game's graphics, presentation, visual design and art style. A lot of people seem to conflate graphical fidelity, that is how detailed textures and assets are, with how good it can actually look beyond just those considerations. This game looks fantastic, I mean really phenomenal. The first thing that comes to mind are these beautiful skyboxes and backdrops that just radiate this immense feeling of awe. The red and orange scorched hue originating from coral swarms, the light rays trapped in Xylem's thick fog, and the beautiful contrast of the night sky juxtaposed with huge fucking explosions. I think scenes like these are masterfully done, adding so much to the game's visual spectacle and creating immensely memorable set pieces. While objects and environmental building blocks are fairly lacking in raw resolution and fidelity, this is only really noticeable if you take the time to stop and look at it really closely, which is something that makes a lot of sense given how most of these props are either minuscule compared to your AC or completely towering over you. The speed at which you'll be playing effectively makes it so it's irrelevant, and this is further magnified by the fact your AC itself always looks pristine and fantastic. They know what you'll be looking at the most throughout your playthrough, and that's your AC, these look damn good, the reflective paint jobs in particular are jaw-dropping. Another incredibly well-realized concept is the game's atmosphere. While people might say the color palette looks too boring, sapped of vibrancy and bland, I think this is exactly why it so successfully captures what it's trying to represent. Abandoned megastructures that stretch beyond what the eye can see, grungy dark caves portraying that uncanny feeling of exploring the unknown, a sand-swept surface, devoid of life, effectively representing how much of a barren wasteland Rubicon 3 has become, and vast mountain ranges and sheets of ice, as cold as the dystopian reality the characters inhabit in. Even if the soundtrack is a bit more subdued this time around, it's still a masterclass, working beautifully in tandem with these visuals to convey such unique feelings of dread, haunting possibility, hope on the horizon, and vastness. Atmosphere here is done incredibly well. Speaking of soundtrack, the audio engineers and Foley artists deserve a big fat paycheck, holy shit, every sound effect in the game is crafted to near perfection. They are so weighty, visceral, carrying over so much momentum and impact behind every click and clank, they are the real stars of the show. I love how there are even so many different pitches for thrusters, laser weapons screeching and your AC's feet sliding across surfaces. It's a seriously underrated aspect of the game. The same goes for the actual VFX, all the explosions and piles of smoke and debris, the way some objects crumble and just give out after you plow through them, and the particle effects and trails of most weapons are on a level of their own, it's especially impressive when you combine them all happening at the same time and they can still be visually clear enough to communicate everything that's on the screen at once. I am thoroughly impressed. The cherry on top of the cake is the slow motion effect at the end of battle encounters. Fuck yeah, I love slow-mo. It makes you feel like a badass anime protagonist every single time. I know right? Such a brilliant little touch that leaves a profound impression on the player. The kineticism of it all is just incredible. I'm not even going to touch performance because there's really nothing to say here. This game runs flawlessly, never did it ever drop a single frame for me, or crash, or bugged out. This is so polished I can almost see my reflection when I look at my screen. 
From software games are often perceived to be very light on the narrative department, something that fans are quick to retort about. It's not that they are light on narrative, rather it's that they aren't nearly as overt or blatantly as expositional as other contemporary titles, and this is quite a key distinction to make. Most of From's catalog is full of immersive, well-realized and intriguing worlds and plot lines. In fact world building might be their single strongest suit as a developer after raw gameplay. The reality is that most of the world building and story beats are delivered through environmental storytelling, contextual hints, subtext and underlying interpretations and correlations made from various parts of their games. In short, they are all a big puzzle, with pieces scattered around. To put them all together is up to the player's inclinations. This naturally makes it all feel very missable and non-existent if you don't go out of your way to fully explore it. I am a big fan of this approach to building a strong narrative. It leaves things up to interpretation and promotes active searching and questioning of what's presented, rather than sitting through non-stop exposition. The exposition-heavy style of storytelling is still a pretty valid way of conveying a narrative, but it comes across as too on the nose and lacking inspiration in most examples that come to my mind. This all to say that Armored Core 6, alongside Sekiro, is perhaps their best attempt at combining the best of both approaches so far. On the one hand the heavy emphasis on comms, briefings and straight-up logs to convey the bulk of the plot lines, makes it so everyone can easily understand what's happening on a moment-to-moment -moment basis. On the other hand all the aforementioned particularities like part and arena descriptions, subtext and contextual analysis, provide immense room for exploring the underlying themes and foundations of the very world being portrayed. I think with this game more than any other, players will be able to pick it up and know exactly what's going on from beginning to end, while still having more questions than answers by the time they roll the credits. This basically balances out on immediate engagement and long-term retention and is overall just a great way to go at it. In addition to this, the actual story and the characters that intervene throughout it have some of the best written dialogue, voice work and motivations I've ever seen in any of these games. I'm definitely on Team Michigan. Attention you maggots, like this video and subscribe ASAP. Unless you want me to start a sewing club without you. Yeah, he's hilarious, unlike you. In fact, most character arcs are fully realized and well-developed. Shit, there's three different branching paths and they all make sense, and the way they tie into the game's progression system through New Game Plus is nothing short of fantastic. It definitely kept me hooked all the way through. While it's not my favorite Armored Core universe when it comes to the actual world building, it definitely has my favorite characters out of all of them, and that's saying a lot. Mission and level design in Armored Core has always been an extremely mixed bag. Sometimes you would get completely garbage mission objectives and layouts, sometimes you would get really inspired complex and interconnected maps with very interesting pacing and fights. It was always polarizing, oftentimes within the same game even. Fortunately, this time around, it seems a very consistent level of quality has been achieved all throughout the campaign. AC6's missions have a bit of everything thrown around in the mix, you get the short but sweet enemy gauntlets, time trials, tower defense sections, stealth missions, and even multi-layered levels with several side objectives based on exploration. It's wonderful. Nonetheless, not all missions are made equal, and understandably not all of them are going to be great or serve the same purpose. But I want to focus our attention on Infiltrate Grid 086 and how it's got to be one of my favorite video game missions ever. Admittedly this is one of the very few levels that actually comes off as nearly perfect, but if anything, it stands as a testament to just how high the bar can be set for future titles. There are plenty of ways to approach the level, multiple secrets and off-the-beaten-path nooks and crannies that are worth looking into. The enemy variety on this mission is also pretty healthy, and above all else there's an incredible feeling of openness and verticality to the layout of the level. There's a reason why different parts of the overworld here are used as separate assignments later down the line, and that's because this is just a wonderfully crafted place to cause mayhem in. Other standout missions are the Strider boss fight for example. This might be one of my favorite bosses in the game. It's so well-paced, methodical and intimidating at the same time. The sheer spectacle of it really lets the player know they are in for a wild ride, considering how early on in the game it appears. When the level layout itself is the boss fight, then you have done something right. This absolutely plays to the strengths of AC's maneuverability and emphasis on 3D movement, and I love it. I wish more encounters played out like this, one can hope this will become more common in the future. Another thing I want to point out is how exciting the campaign feels. There is literally only one mission in the game that is a complete momentum killer, and you all know which one it is. Looking at you Nefentis. Aside from this one, most missions feel really replayable and not a chore to go through over and over. This pairs incredibly well with the fact you're supposed to go for three separate playthroughs before you get to understand the bigger picture, and conversely it also supports the concept of trying out wildly different loadouts to tackle different challenges. 
all in all we see the makings of something truly special at times, even if mostly defaulting back to high octane, generally really enjoyable short and sweet missions we all know and love. I think they nailed it this time around. This is the most responsive armored core of the bunch. Sure there might be something to be said about how there's not enough focus on actually mechanically controlling your mech compared to previous games, but it's still a welcome trade-off nonetheless. There is minimal disconnect from the input of your controller to the AC on the screen, all animations are absolutely glorious and it doesn't completely do away with making you feel like you're piloting a towering 10 meter tall war machine, a very difficult thing to achieve. There's inertia in movements, always a reaction to every action, and the AC behaves to counter this. It's something that is very noticeable on how recoil, reloading, jumping and landing is handled. Furthermore, combat is fast. It's fucking brutal. Every dodge is deliberate and you are forced to be engaged at all times even against fodder enemies. This game is completely focused on making you enter a flow state constantly, giving you all the tools to express yourself in whichever way you prefer and patting you on the back saying, go get them you hound. Quite literally you are incentivized to hound your targets, get in, stagger them, deliver your finishing combo and get out, and man does it feel so good. You can completely reverse this if you want to and stay away for the most part, just picking apart enemies and choosing your fights, but AC6 shines the brightest in the mid to close range encounters. We all remember fondly of all the mechanical depth that's present in previous games, but AC6 is no slouch here either. One thing that comes to mind immediately is how melee weapons have completely been reshaped into another beast, especially all the animation cancelling around it, it's some of the most satisfying stuff you can pull off here. Another thing, tanks can drift. How cool is that? I've never been captivated by playing the tank AC archetype, but even those are so fun to control this time around, especially with how you can just ram your whole frame onto whatever unsuspecting poor sod is lying in front of you, utterly decimating the poor bastard. Another extremely underrated system that needs talking about is the multi-lock feature for missiles. This has always been absolutely a pain to get the hang of in previous games, either because it was unintuitive or just poorly conveyed in the game UI. This time around though, multi-locking missiles just works. It just does. And it works exactly as you would expect it to. No weird shit. The missiles sort themselves out, seek their intended targets and everything is consistent all the way through, making it incredibly fun to experiment with. Lastly, even though I like to complain about how there's not much part variety within the same categories, I have to hand it to them. If you pick any weapon that fills a certain role and compare it to any other in the garage, chances are they are going to behave completely differently, and I mean completely. A bazooka has nothing to do with a rifle. Likewise a shotgun has nothing to do with a laser pistol. There's a lot of identity to these weapons, they all have their own little gimmicks and how they tie into different playstyles, making for a really interesting sandbox of possibilities just by themselves. Things like the charge mechanic add so much potential to any single weapon, you're basically getting a two for one. Nothing feels quite as cool to pull off than a fully charged linear rifle finisher on an AC. Completely doing away with the traditional heat system and instead bringing it onto melee and energy weapons is also a pretty interesting and novel change. This effectively introduces reload time to energy-based units which is a great way to balance them out as they tend to be quite good at dishing out consistent damage. Pairing this with the ability to effectively fire four units at once or hot swap between them and you get something truly unique to play around with. The developers said they wanted to emphasize combos. Well, they sure did manage to do that. Armored Core has suddenly become a much more reactive game, thanks to these changes, and I think that's for the better. Ultimately I think this game has one of the strongest, most addicting and well-realized gameplay loops of any title I've played so far. And these people made Sekiro, that one is pretty hard to compete with when it comes to game feel, so take it as you will. Armored Core's soul lies in its customization options, both the functional and the cosmetic ones. The main focus of the game is conveyed very blatantly through the title, you quite literally armor up your core. Everything you see and don't see about your mech is completely up to you to put together. This has always been by far the most daunting aspect of gameplay for newcomers, seeing that there used to be so many different obscure stats attached to every part, most of the times these didn't translate super well into the action, well at least not as much as one would think, instead serving to leverage other related stats that would then go on to actually influence combat. Armored Core 6 firmly shakes those conventions off by doing away with most of these complicated parameters, and sticking with the bare essential things that actually affect how you play the game. One good example of this is how the new energy management system works. Previously, picking a generator would basically boil down to getting the most efficient one relative to its detrimental specs. Now this part category intertwines much better with all the other parts of the AC. You'll have to build for EN capacity, different supply recoveries, weight, even seemingly previously unrelated parts, 
like the core itself, affect considerations to be made about your generator and booster choices. Things like these can be seen a bit all throughout every stat sheet of every part. There seems to be a greater focus on synergy rather than clearing conditions to stitch together your ideal AC, and that's much more interesting to me. Sure, maybe more stats wouldn't hurt, but as things stand, balance aside, there's plenty to dig into here, and best of all is that it's pushed onto the player in a tight concise and clear way, even if there are still a lot of hidden moving parts under the hood. Another example of how they succeeded in translating choices made in the garage into the action comes in the form of the leg parts. Everyone who's experimented with these will let you know, it really feels like you're radically changing up your gameplay just by swapping out these parts around. They aren't just arbitrary stat sticks, and I suspect as the game's life cycle further develops with new regulations being introduced, these will feel even more unique and distinguishable from each other. It's downright impossible to mention customization without also shining a spotlight on the emblem and paint editors. You can really go into some insane detail by combining the two and flexing your creative muscle. It's quite hard to do it justice just by describing it so it's better if I show rather than tell. Even with all that complexity still being retained, Armored Core 6 manages to strike an almost impossible balance between being easy enough to pick up, and just hard enough to master, keeping both ends of the player base spectrum sufficiently satisfied. Indeed one of the most common things I've heard throughout the years whenever Armored Core was brought into a conversation, was just how incredibly hard it was for newcomers to get to grips with everything it immediately threw at them. Be it the never-ending walls of text, over-complicated controls, very punishing systems, extremely high skill ceiling mechanics, and overall lack of polish and presentation in many aspects of the games. I think this entry throws a lot of that baggage out of the window, making for an incredibly accessible, distilled and focused take on what Armored Core is. There is no gatekeeping in AC6, this game is finally made for everyone. That's not without its problems obviously, but you can't restart an entire franchise by making it completely inaccessible to people who don't even know what it is. Building a bridge between one of the most popular gaming subgenres and this other IP on life support has turned out to be a great decision, the benefits of which far outweigh the possible repercussions. Still regarding the onboarding process, I can't praise the starting mission and dedicated tutorial challenges enough. Illegal Entry is hands down one of the best intro sequences for a game I've ever played, it basically teaches you everything you need to know in such an elegant yet subtle way. These two onboarding methods combined will make you fully aware of mostly everything your AC can actually do, and by the time you finally get your hands on a stolen call sign, you'll be ready to learn, adapt and overcome any challenge that comes in the following chapters. This is one of the reasons why I think the devs really understand what they are doing in this revitalization project. I'm happy to see everyone jumping into the AC train and finally having it click with them. This is what it's all about. This newfound popularity results in plenty of resources and content being made around the game, and man oh man, the floodgates have opened. This series has survived and endured throughout time because of the fervent support of the community, and seeing it flourish as it is now really puts it in a privileged spot going forward. I don't think we'll ever again have to worry about not getting a new Armored Core game, and that is all thanks to you. Thank you Ravens for giving it a chance and sticking through the experience. Finally I wanted to mention some of the unsung heroes of Armored Core 6, starting off with the photo mode. Thank you from software, from the bottom of my heart. This is an absolute godsend for both content creators and armored decor enthusiasts, who, let's face it, account for 95% of the player base. Allowing us to see our favorite creations in real time and in different scenarios is just an absolute blast. Speaking of creations, schematic code sharing is exactly what we have needed since forever. It's a shame it doesn't really work cross-platform, but if your friends happen to play in the same system as you do, then this is absolutely invaluable if you want to share your goofy ACs. Another invaluable feature is the item preview window in the shop. This is self-explanatory, especially for the first playthrough. Having a way to see exactly how the parts perform and behave before committing to buying them makes sense, it's a natural evolution for the shop menu. And man are the menus clean. I love the sleek, minimalistic aesthetic of all the menus, text boxes and information on display here. I never get lost navigating anywhere and it's all conveniently packed into each appropriate category, something that has been notoriously janky in previous titles. This not only accelerates building time but also prevents you from wandering around aimlessly looking for a specific feature you can't find. All that being said, what I love the most when it comes to quality of life changes is how assembling, previewing and testing your AC is so easy. Never before have we had such a seamless flow of building and testing before, the loading times are almost non-existent and you can swap out your build in the middle of the training room. 
This training environment is just awesome, you can pretty much lose yourself in here just practicing your combos, studying your loadout or experimenting with wild crazy ideas. It's so inspiring and such an obvious thing that should have been this well realized before. Whoever decided this part of the game was supposed to receive such love from the dev team deserves a raise, because they were completely right. So why do you think Armored Core 6 just changed everything? What do you mean by that? This is a game that leads by example. In the same way that Baldur's Gate 3 managed to catch everyone by surprise, by being an overwhelmingly amazing experience, thus catapulting CRPGs back into the mainstream, Armored Core 6 has this to say. You can do whatever you want to do, so long as you maintain a cohesive vision for your project and respect your established player base, the result will speak for itself. From Software is sending a message out to the world, that they aren't just the Souls game studio, or the one-trick pony that sticks close to success and runs away from ever trying out new things. Mechs are not popular in the West at all. Armored Core has always been a series with a cult following but never much more than that, yet here we stand. The franchise is now sitting in the big leagues with all the other popular titles out there. Armored Core 6 changed everything for From Software, they now have two major ongoing and wholly different types of games they can iterate on. Armored Core 6 changed everything for the series, because it has finally reached the point of mass appeal, where it won't sit forgotten in the shadows as a relic of the past anymore. Armored Core 6 changed everything because at the end of the day, this game is just fucking fun. It's fun to play, look at, listen to, bond over with, experiment in, replay over and over. It's a complete package, respecting most of its long-standing legacy, and celebrating a time where this studio was staying afloat because of this very franchise. It is without a shadow of a doubt a passion project, an outstanding achievement for both old and new fans, and above all else, FromSoft's biggest comeback ever. The die is cast now, this might only be the beginning of something even more monumental, and I hope all you ravens stay along for the ride. Until then, thank you very much for watching, and stay boosting. If you enjoyed this video I encourage you to leave a like, and subscribe to the channel, or else. We have set up a Patreon for any raven that wants to contribute however they can, so boss can keep the generators running, otherwise I might get deleted when the power goes off. We appreciate your amazing continued support. Main system, entering normal mode.